Richard. This mystifying character of Hotline Miami is an enigma. His goals and motivations are never clearly laid out, and his encounters with the characters are surrealistic in nature, occurring in dreams or hallucinations. He even begins to blur the line between game and reality, posing questions for the players themselves to reflect on. Can the nightmare presence of Richard ever be explained? Well, let's go ahead and give it a shot. Now, I want to make a quick aside before getting into the video. I don't think the character of Richard can ever be fully explained, as he's incredibly subjective. The thoughts and ideas laid out in this video are only a handful, and you may not see the character in this way. I implore you to explore your own thoughts and come to your own conclusion on what you think the character means to you. After all, art is in the eye of the beholder. Now, with that out of the way, let's get started. Richard first appears in Holland, Miami during Jacket's coma dreams. He's sitting in a dark room along with two other masked individuals. A woman dressed as a girl wearing a Don Juan mask, and a man dressed as a Russian mobster wearing a Rasmus mask. This trio are parts of Jacket's psyche, and they help guide Jacket through his memories to wake him from his coma. Rasmus is hostile, aggressive, and his disdain towards Jacket combined with his attire as a Russian gangster could symbolize that Jacket reasons that the Russians hate him just as much as he hates them, which justifies their murders and absolves him of any guilt. Rasmus, who is soaked in blood red light, symbolizes all the hate and violence warring within Jacket. Don Juan is bathed in a soothing blue light, and her concerned tone contrasts greatly with Rasmus. Much like the girl she embodies could possibly feel, Don Juan is concerned with Jacket's well-being, attempting to comfort him. Her attempts to warn Jacket about the truth and hide him from it imply she represents Jacket's guilt. This could be further supported by Don Juan being dressed as a girl, whose death Jacket is indirectly responsible for, something he feels incredibly guilty about. Richard himself is quite enigmatic. When he first begins speaking, he talks as if he himself is a physical person, someone that Jacket has met and has been introduced to. Those words, however, are just a stand-in for the actual Richard mask, meant to represent when Jacket began killing for 50 blessings. The spirit of Richard represents something else entirely, and the clue could be in the rest of his dialogue. In most of it, Richard acts as a bridge to reality asking Jacket four questions in their second encounter, which helps guide Jacket's thinking back to reality, and at their third encounter, Richard leaves Jacket with three predictions, the culmination of which causes reality to come crashing in and wake Jacket from his coma. But when Richard poses the four questions to Jacket, and in particular, the question of who's leaving the messages on your answering machine, he's also attempting to help him understand the truth behind everything. That 50 blessings are the ones leaving him the messages. And if Jacket could understand that, he could prevent the tragedies that are about to befall him. However, when Jacket attacks Biker, he loses the opportunity to find the truth, and the rest of his life plays out to its tragic end. Therefore, Richard could represent truth, and Jacket failing to understand Richard, or the truth, is symbolic of Jacket failing to understand everything behind the phone messages, leaving him empty and alone. Richard returns in Hotline Miami 2, although his appearances are a little different. He appears to the majority of the cast during nightmare sequences, and often inhabits the bodies of one close to the dreamer. He also seems to adopt some of the personality of those he's possessing. For instance, he shares the fatalistic views of Grandfather when appearing before his son. He comforts Richter before his death, just like Rosa would do for her son. And part of Evan's hallucination centers around money, exactly what the hobo is asking for prior to the hallucination. He even directly adopts the persona of the fans during Mark's hallucination, repeating the exact words they're due to say in the near future. This creates an intensely unsettling encounter for the dreamer, and Richard often warns of some tragedy due to befall the character in the near future, typically the character's death. 
In this regard, you could say Richard is a sort of angel of death, a bearer of omens, an agent of ruin that warns people of their impending death to give them a chance to save themselves. However, most of the characters do not heed his warning and march to their doom. But Richard may be even more than an angel of death, and the key indication is a short cutscene known as the table sequence. After the conclusion of the game, if a new game is started, this cutscene will play before the start. In it, Richard speaks to each of the characters of Hotline Miami 2 before they're all systematically killed. Afterwards, Richard starts a projector that replays the events of the game. The story doesn't change, however, and the characters are forced to relive their failings and their deaths all over again. This could be an indication that Richard could be some sort of spirit that trapped the souls of the characters of Hotline Miami in an endless hell, where they're punished for leading to the ruination of the world and doomed to relive their deaths over and over again for eternity. But maybe there's another way we could see this. Even though it's Richard that starts the projector, he merely watches the events of the game unfold before him, possibly meaning he's only a spectator to the violence of Hotline Miami. Which begs the question, who was the one forcing these characters to repeat their deaths over and over again? Well, the key clue again comes from Richard's dialogue. Right at the beginning of the table sequence, Richard addresses the characters, asking why they've come back, since they know how everything ends. Here, he's not only asking the characters, but the players themselves who have returned to the game. Maybe they've returned to partake in the addictive violence in the game, or maybe they've returned to try and understand everything. Maybe they themselves don't know why, but they've come back, and with each subsequent playthrough are forcing the characters to relive their tragic stories, knowing there's no way to change the ending. The players are the ones that have trapped the characters, not Richard, who's only an audience member to the show that the players demand the characters of Hotline Miami play for them. The characters are only granted peace when the players put down the controller and walk away from the game. This fourth wall breaking meta narrative showcases another trademark characteristic of the enigmatic rooster. There are times where his words bleed through the screen and are directed to the players themselves. For instance, when warning Martin Brown of the twist ending to Midnight Animal, he's foreshadowing Martin's death, but he's also warning the player of the twist ending to Hotline Miami 2. He gives them a chance to quit playing and get out before it's too late, a warning that is often ignored. Perhaps the most prominent example is when Richard poses this famous question to Jackie, do you like hurting other people? Richard is not only asking Jacket, but also the player, forcing them to consider the uncomfortable possibility that they enjoy violence and destruction. The easy answer would be no, but if that were the case, why couldn't they put down the controller and stop the slaughter that happens in Hotline Miami? Of course, to escape the guilt, most players would explain that Hotline Miami is just a game, and we don't really enjoy the violence we cause. But Martin Brown says something similar during his hallucination. We didn't believe him. Can we believe ourselves? No matter our thinking, Richard knows the truth. But that concludes the curious case of Richard. Again, these are only a small subset of ideas about the character, and I implore you to explore your own thoughts and feelings and reach your own conclusions to explain the enigmatic rooster. Your thoughts and ideas will be just as good as my own. But that's that, so thank you for watching and see you later.